Hello again, friends. Uh, I'm your host, Piali, and uh, I welcome you to this session. Today, I have Mr. Eric Buehler with me from Spain. Eric is the founder director of uh, Innova First Company, where they help professionals to transform their companies uh, through agility. Eric is also the best-selling uh, book he has written. He's the author of the best-selling book, uh, Leading Exponential Change. And uh, today, uh, Eric will tell us uh, how to effectively convert an agile change plan uh, to one that can be implemented uh, everywhere in the com uh, company, not just in the IT teams. So that's all uh, we are going to learn from Eric's uh, session today. Very interesting thing. So many things we are going to explore. It's a one-hour session. Uh, regarding the questions, you can type your question in the chat box and uh, towards the end and uh, once more in between, Eric will take care of the question. So that's all from my side. I would request Eric to take the show forward now. Over to you, Eric. Okay. Very good morning for me. Very good afternoon, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed today the webinar. We're going to be talking about different things and specifically about change. Change is a very, very difficult topic, especially in companies, as sometimes when we move from one company to another, think that we probably are using previous companies and work very well. It does not work very well in the following company. And for um, co Coaches, agile coaches, or uh, people in charge of the transformation, that's a challenge. So the plan today for the presentation is I'm going to be talking about how to create plans that can go beyond agile and Scrum. I know that many of you have been working with Scrum for such a long time and trying to um, implement the agile mindset in the company, lean mindset, or any other mindset. Um, I know that many have found very difficult to expand the original ideas that you use on IT teams to the rest of the organization. So I'm going to tell you first what you're going to need today. You're going to need a couple of sticky notes, two or three, and you're also going to need a pen. If you don't have a sticky notes, don't worry, you can use paper. And the idea is that we're going to run some experiments during the presentation today and I'm going to ask you to write a couple of things and then at the end of the presentation you can ask me some questions if you have any very very important question during the presentation you can ask Piali and um, we can put it on the stack and we can answer at some point and hope you are ready for today. Some of the concepts we are going to be seeing today are quite advanced. I'm going to just try to give you an introduction. And I hope that helps you uh, accelerating your agile transformation or your company's transformation. And one of the important things about change is that change happens everywhere in small companies, in big companies, in very complex or simple companies. And there are certain rules that you can follow. So hope you're ready today, guys. Um, hope you got a pen, so you got some paper, and also just uh, remind you that this webinar is gonna be available afterward. You can watch it and you can review the concept if you didn't understand anything of um, the information that I provided today. So this webinar is based on uh, my recent book. Um, which is leading exponential change. Basically, um, when I was trying to find a book about change, I found a couple of books, but they were not based on, on the fact that today companies are using Agile, are using Lean, and are using Scrum. So I was wondering what I could read or how, how I can change a company, how I can accelerate change in the company. And many of these books were talking all either about uh, very high level theories related to change, or they were talking about um, very um, old fashioned companies. So at some point I said, Eric, well, let's try to see 
if we can work in a book that um, can talk about um, how to make a change in a Dutch company, how to accelerate that. And at some point, I talked to very uh, four people, very well-known people, and I asked them to write a couple of stories for the book. Uh, so try to include also different perspectives. Uh, I include five key patterns to accelerate uh, transformation in the company. In fact, uh, something you're going to learn today is that there are some ways that you can accelerate a transformation or change in your company. And I know that some of you can say, okay, my company, um, perhaps in my company, it's very hard to make any change. Um, people are very reluctant to this uh, new mindset or these ideas. But as you're going to see today, there are certain things that you can do in a, in a company that is going to accelerate that transformation. And it doesn't matter if uh, that's a very complex organization, very big, where people do not want to change, or it's a very, very a small company with very easygoing people. At the end of the day, all the companies have human beings, and then there are some tricks that you can use in any company. And then something that people were asking, we are not going to have time to be to, to check that today, but um, I know that some of you face a big challenge, which is working with teams with very low uh, motivation. And an important thing is how to make sure that you are able to work with those teams. Otherwise, uh, what we generally see when you are running a transformation or a change is that if people are not very well motivated, also certain areas of the company are not very well motivated, uh, they tend to drag the transformation and, and, and the transformation at some point stops. And it's very difficult sometimes for some coaches or managers uh, to deal with this kind of situation where um, people uh, or certain groups are not very well motivated. And this is one of the important things when you deal with a transformation, is try to understand the level of motivation of people that you're gonna have people who are gonna be very motivated and people who are not going to be very motivated at all and how to deal with this kind of uh, situations. And finally, I include um, two frameworks, ELSA and DELTA, uh, which are two um, change frameworks. Uh, the ELSA change framework is useful when you are trying to, in some way, to run a transformation in a place where leadership is supporting your transformation. And DELTA in is uh, when those leaders are not actively involved. And this is something I see in for years, that in some companies, leaders do not support the transformation as they do not understand very well how um, the transformation work, how the change work, or how um, change the organization, and why we should become agile or um, implement a scrum. And for many, many managers or for many um, uh, transformation coaches, uh, this is a huge challenge. Many of them do not start a transformation or a change unless leadership is fully involved. In. And that's a huge problem because you are at the end of the day, you are wasting time, any, any minute counts. And then you have to make sure you start the transformation at any point. So that's why I provide um, this to change frameworks, which are obviously available for free. You can use it everywhere. And let's just stop talking about my book and let's just start talking about the objective. That's what, that's the reason why you are here today. Um, the first part, uh, we are gonna be talking about how to create a change plan that can be implemented anywhere in the organization. And when I say anywhere in the organization, we are talking about um, outside IT today and I'm going to place the focus outside IT as probably for the last 10 or 15 years we have been focused on changing uh, the teams and specifically I'm talking about the scrum we know the practices we know almost everything that we have to implement 
when we want to change a team. But the massive probably challenge here is when you want to expand those changes to the rest of the organization. How you do that? How do I know it's going to work? In fact, many of the changes that you generally uh, do in these teams can't be expanded to the rest of the organization. And the very important, a very important thing is that an organization to be agile needs to change on, a, in, in, on the whole, not just the IT teams. You can't optimize or improve an organization just by changing the IT teams. So today we're going to learn how to create a change plan, and let's call it adapt. I'm going to show you how to take um, uh, some plan that you are currently um, change plan you are uh, or you have done with the IT teams or Scrum teams, and make sure you change that plan in order to use it somewhere else in the organization. That has been one of the biggest challenges in the last few years, and this is uh, the first objective. And the second part we're going to see today is how to um, use certain techniques that's going to accelerate change. Unfortunately, human beings, we are not um, prepared for change. Our brains are not very well prepared for change. And if you take a look at a company, you have different types of different kinds of people. There are people that are very keen on changing all the time, and there are people that probably who are okay if you propose something else, something new, for example. And there are people who do not want to change until they understand how it works. And that's one of the biggest challenges, how we can make sure that we accelerate change in the company. If you can't accelerate change in your company, what is going to happen is at some point, you're going to have some people who are not be willing to change, and that's going to potentially drag your transformation to a point where it's going to be very difficult for you to keep uh, moving in a natural way and transforming the company. And we're going to learn today some of the techniques. Some of the techniques are uh, slightly holistic, uh, but, but we are going to see that, that you can easily use them in your company with people who are not initially willing to change. And these are going to be the two objectives we are going to be covering today. Just um, to remind you that if you have any questions, just uh, write it on the chat box and we are going to answer at some point today. But the first thing I wanted to clarify, and this is uh, generally confused for um, people, is regarding transformation versus incremental change and this is um something very important as if you do not understand the different the differences between a transformation and incremental change then you are not going to be able to transform your organization and this is a very very important concept they look very similar incremental change and transformation but they are not the same and also the techniques that you can use in one probably are not going to fully work in the other one. So I'm going to show you what the transformation is from my perspective and what incremental change is. So we say that the company has um, what we call convergent periods. That are periods where something happens in the company and something changes and and that creates to another convergent period. For example, um, you start doing uh, um, Scrum or you start to change, you finish with that change, and then they create, they, they generate another convergent period, and this convergent period comes one after another. And an organization in uh, a couple of years have hundreds of convergent periods. Sometimes they are not very clear, but you can see that the organization changed in some way. And then we have one after the other, and every convergent period uh, um, contains certain changes, and they lead to another, let's say, another organization, which is very similar to the previous one. So you have some changes, you apply those changes successfully, and that leads to another convergent period, and you start again 
with some changes and that leads to another conviction periods and so on and continuously and never never stops so when we are talking about a transformation uh, we are talking about a radical change in mindset a radical change in the way that people think or people solve the problems and we are also talking about a simplification in the organization and I try to grow in a way that you can understand how you can imagine this transformation. So you have some change at some point that completely changes the organization and the organization goes in a completely different way. You have a, a kind of change in the strategy, you have a change in the mindset, how people solve those problems, how people even socialize in the company, but that leads to a simplification of the organization. So the organization it's a completely different organization that it was probably a few months before. And this is what we call transformation. In most of transformations, we can see that the formal or the informal values of this company change. So when I say informal values, we are talking about the values that people generally hold about ideas, how to relate one to each other, etc. how they socialize, how they solve a problem, etc. 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 And when we talk about the formal values are the values that you usually see um, about the organization, these public values. And this is what we call a transformation. So in order to simplify that, I could say that the organization reinvents itself all the time and create a new organization. Yeah. And just think of uh, Google or YouTube or or um, uh, Netflix, they are constantly changing. And also they are changing what they sell. Um, so this is what we call a transformation. But incremental change is slightly um, different. And sometimes people um, confuse a transformation with incremental change. With incremental change, you have these periods of change that there is never ever a massive change in the organization. And if you can see a change, the change is just to reaffirm the current rules. Um, and generally what you are trying to do in this incremental change is just trying to make sure that you build a solid organization. So basically you start with something, imagine you have an organization with certain values, and then this incremental change is make sure that the existing values reaffirm. And then you are able to uh, go to the following step where you continue exactly in the same direction. So you basically start in one direction and continue, continue um, for a long, long time in the same direction. And if it, any conversion period here is going to add uh, more bureaucracy or more rules to make sure that nothing is going to stop you to go in that direction so here there is no a real transformation let's say that the company is improving all the time at what they do in terms of values the way that they do work but there is um here no disruption they basically continue in the same direction and here an important concept is what we call incremental change so basically you take the the ideas from the previous conversion period you improve it and you continue walking exactly um, in the same direction. And this is what we see in countries, in many countries where basically instead of reinventing themselves and trying to simplify the country, the bureaucracy, they basically keep walking exactly in the same direction with the same ideas, with the same mindset, and, and, and they try to reform the status quo and the bureaucracy. And this is very good to give stability to a company and it's an incremental change is very important in fact after a transformation you need a period of incremental change but uh, this is not what we call a transformation so today we're going to be focusing on the left um, um, hand side but if you have more questions about this uh, the differences between transformation and incremental change you can ask me but we are uh, more focused on companies which need to disrupt whatever they are doing, create create a, a, a new values, new ways of working, new ways of socializing inside the company, a, a new mindset, and simplifying the organization. So we're going to be focused today on the left-hand side. Um, let's go back to the previous topic where I was talking about an agile transformation. 
And I wanted to tell you first a couple of things that happened in my experience during a natural transformation. And probably you are going to feel that many of these things happen also to you. And generally when you run a natural transformation or you are implementing Scrum or Lean or any other modern um, mindset, framework or methodology, um, you're going to see that um, the focus is back to people. So we generally value more people and their interactions over the processes. And the reason why we do that is because most of the things we are doing in modern companies are related to innovation. And you can um, create innovation if people do not connect very well in the company. So we go back to the focus and we place the focus on people. That means connecting with clients. Inside the company, we have teams. Um, if you are using Scrum, for example, teams tend to be self-organized, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as a result of that, uh, more knowledge is made available. When people talk more and they talk more informally and, and they connect better, then they create more knowledge and they retain that knowledge. And this is a very important thing. If we create more knowledge in the company, it means that you're going to be able to make better decisions. And then um, all of the things that you can generally see is when you start um, transforming the company or you start implementing any new methodology, uh, like say, for example, less to scale or Scrum or uh, or even using in mind um, the, the lean mindset or the agile mindset is that employees feel uh, energized. And the reason why they feel energized is because um, they start seeing that they can have an impact on someone else. They can make decisions. And also, uh, they can change the processes. And this is very important that employees can start taking ownership of um, whatever they do. And um, with transformation, we generally see that uh, values in the company start change. And again, just think of values like the informal ones. Uh, and the form of values, informal values, is how I conduct myself during the day and how I connect with people. Um, and, and that's going to lead probably uh, uh, to a new vision for the company. Uh, we are reinventing the company. But there are also some things that uh, are not that good during a change or a transformation is that um, for some reason, at some point, everything is working well. And for some reason, uh, at some point, that change or transformation lose traction. And you have no idea why it's happening. Um, also, we can have um, an increase in conflict. As things are changing all the time, then what we generally see is that um, um, you know people do not feel very comfortable about this new situation, um, and there can be uh, some misunderstandings, and especially if you are implementing a, a Scrum. Some of the roles in the company or positions are going to change. For example, someone uh, who was a boss before, a manager. Now he or she is in charge of removing obstacles for the team and is like a servant leader. And this is very aggressive for people when you change the role. And sometimes people do not fully understand and that generates a conflict. There can be an increase in uncertainty. Um, also, we can have a, a drop in business value, uh, temporary drop in business value. You are delivering a, pro a product, but as you are changing, uh, everything is changing now, um, then what's happening here is that for certain periods, um, perhaps people are not going to be able to deliver uh, business value, to deliver the product as it was before. It's going to take some time until the company readjusts all uh, their internal um, uh, processes. And this is one of the things we generally see in uh, um, or during uh, transformation. And this is important that uh, we understand that there are good things. And uh, also, there are certain things which are going to happen. And let's go to the next one. And if we go to the manifesto for agile uh, software development, some people generally forget that agile 
was created for software development. And if you take a look at the manifesto, it focuses on developing software. So I'm not saying here that you can't apply Agile to the rest of the organization, but you have to be very careful as some of the ideas here, especially with the Agile principles, um, are very difficult to apply in the rest of the company. And in fact, uh, this mindset is very good for software. And there are certain things that you can do on software. And there are certain things that people um, in, in, in a software team get used to, uh, but not in the rest of the company. So you can say, for example, OK, I changed the software team. I stopped there. But you can't fully improve an organization but sh by just changing software teams. And I remember um, last year, uh, they called me from a company in Germany to see if I could help them, very famous company, very well-known company. And they asked me if I could change um, or help the IT teams. And I'm sure it happened also to you. Uh, and I said, why do you wanted to change the IT teams? And they said, because we wanted to change the organization. And I said, okay, what about the rest of the organization? Should we work with middle management, with the executives in the organization, and with the rest of the people in the organization? I said, no, no, we believe that if we just change the software teams, it should be okay. And in reality, um, you can't fully improve that organization and make the organization more flexible just by changing the, the software team. And it makes sense, but sometimes people uh, forget about that. And common sense sometimes is less common of all the senses, unfortunately. Also, um, when you are using just one mindset, um, you generally tend to think always plus minus in the same way. And we need to have the completely different mindset. The more mindset you have, the better it is. And this is why I said, OK, the Agile Manifesto is fine, but we need more mindsets. We need, we need more ways to, um, or more ideas, or more way of thinking. Otherwise, we're going to tend to solve the problem plus minus in the same way. And then let's try to review uh, Agile versus something we started hearing hearing a um, few months ago, a few years ago, which is business agility. Basically, when we are talking about agile, we focus on making IT teams more flexible and adaptable to change. I'm not saying that you can expand some of the concepts to the rest of the organization and take the values and um, you know try to create your own uh, practices to use in the rest of the organization. But initially, agile was created for um, uh, agile um, for uh, uh, IT teams, and then we generally use Scrum or Kanban as frameworks. Uh, we focus on products or projects, which generally talk about fixed costs, variable costs, etc. And what many managers or agile coaches or Scrum masters try to do, um, they try to introduce a new way of thinking, a new way of solving problems, and this is very interesting as when you introduce a new way of thinking, um, people start solving the, the problems in a different way. And the reason why it happens is because it's slowly um, the way that your neurons connect in your brain change. And this is what we call neuroplasticity. I'm not going to stand that on, I'm not going to talk about that, but it's just to give you some idea what's happening in your brain. And then um, in Agile, we tend to focus on the work uh, done. Uh, we change uh, um, the sequence, how we do the work. We start using sprint. Uh, if you use, uh, for example, um, uh, the sprint in, in, in Scrum, etc., and um, that establishes the foundation for forming excellent software teams. And you can expand some of these uh, ideas to the rest of the organization, but sometimes it's a little bit complex. And then we um, start to see what we call business agility. And business agility um, had the aim of trying to expand uh, these ideas to the rest of the organization. And instead of focusing on IT teams, um, we focus on organizational design. So we start talking about organizational patterns. We start talking about changing the governance of the organization, budget, etc. And the plan here is that we wanted to create a more flexible um, company. And instead of um, 
creating just a new way of working on these IT teams, um, we create a new way of working through the whole organization. And this is a, an important difference. Um, we also change the way that uh, we create business value um, in the organization. As now everyone is involved, and this is what we call value stream. We focus on, on the whole value stream inside the organization to make sure that we create an excellent product. Um, instead of introducing a new mindset, that this is a very crucial, um, important, very important um, distinction here, is that um, we challenge every existing organizational belief. We just do not focus on changing the way we think. We we, we just focus on, on on challenging almost everything inside um, the organization. And it also provides ideas. We, we focus on patterns, on behaviors, and it's a little bit more comprehensive, so you need more knowledge. And finally, it sets the foundation for a remarkable company, not just an IT team. And this, this is the difference between agile and business agility. And we are going to try to go a little bit deeper on that. I'm going to show you how to uh, or how it works. So basically, the way that any um, consultant, agile coach, manager, scrum master, or anyone involved with change uh, work um, is first they have a reality, then they create a change plan, and then uh, can be again the manager, the agile coaches. A transformation team or anywhere else, they try to help people change and facilitate certain things, and then you, be, you just uh, create a new reality of the company, and then you start again. You have a reality and you have to, to change it, and we try to do it in small cycles. Uh, this is something we learned from Scrum. It's better to work in very, very small cycle, cycles, even when you want to change change something than a very big cycles of changing the organization and taking one year. It's better to make a small change and to see how it works and then you reflect on that and you start again. And in here you can use um, three different approaches. Uh, the first approach you generally use or we have general seen is the top down. I'm imagining uh, many of you uh, have used the top down approach where the CEO of the company comes and says, I wanted to do something, and then that's done in a certain way. This top down approach works very well as long as the people at the bottom of the hierarchies uh, trust the person at the top. But sometimes you have a kind of um, secondary effect, which is. Uh, or lateral effect that is that people at the bottom just tend to follow and do not uh, generally uh, try to improve the processes. So then we have been using in Scrum a different approach, which is the local to global, the bottom up, where you basically start with the teams, you teach the teams about um, challenging whatever they do and trying to improve it, and then you start here and try to expand to the rest of the organization. The main issue with this approach is that sometimes it's very difficult to expand from the local teams to the rest of the organization. And then every approach has advantages and disadvantages. Obviously here, um, leadership has to trust the teams, otherwise it doesn't work very well. And finally, we have the organic option, which is uh, you basically um, implement, imagine you have a Scrum or you have any other framework or methodology or you implement something very small and then when you finish you implement something else. For example, imagine you implement the standards if you are implementing Scrum first and then you implement the retrospective and you add little processes until you complete the whole. And, and then after you implement a new process you see it work very well and then you continue with the next one, are like baby steps. And these are the uh, three um, main different approaches that you can use uh, to go this uh, through this loop about change. And that's why it's very complex because it involves a, a lot of different techniques and different people. Also, it's different in one organization and another. Um, companies have their own local rules. Uh, variability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
I imagine that many of you um, have probably worked with Scrum, have been trying to implement a Scrum in companies. And when we try to um, implement in, uh, some planning companies, as we mentioned before, um, one of the things we have to have into mind is that um, at some point, you're going to have something which works in a team, but you want to implement that in the rest of the organization. Um, and if you want to create a, a, a very flexible organization, you need to make sure that um, the plan or the change can be implemented everywhere in the company and not just in a team. And then here, um, we basically have a couple of questions. Um, the first one, or the typical one, how are we going to do to implement this practice or a similar practice or even a different practice of framework or methodology that's going to be compatible with Agile or with other mindsets? And sometimes what I generally see is that um, people don't know. It works very well with teams, but it doesn't work very well in the rest of the organization. Now, you don't have any idea how to do so. Also, how you expand it if one day the company decides that they want to do that everywhere in the company. For example, imagine you are using um, some framework or procedure or practice that uh, makes products very high quality but you want to apply that in the rest of the organization. You want that everything in the organization has high quality. How do you do that? How do you expand, expand that to the rest of the organization? As you know, you have different departments. If you are working in a bank, how are you gonna tell people from the financial area that they have to produce uh, something very high quality? Perhaps they believe that they are producing high quality um, outcomes, um, but perhaps from your point of view, they are not. And and finally, um, and this is a very important concept, uh, what is going to happen if the company becomes exponential? And when we talk about exponential is that it becomes from, uh, I don't know, 50 employees to 200 or 300 in two or three months. So many of the practices or framework or methodologies we generally use uh, work very well when the company has certain size, but do not work very well if you generally, um, or if, you, if the company uh, becomes and grows exponentially. And this is one of the the different, uh, the three challenges we get. Um, so the first question here is, how do you convert? Uh, I say convert, I don't like the word, but I think you understand that. Uh, agile practices and change plans that you probably use in teams or in IT, uh, you are able to use it or to implement it across the organization. And I'm gonna show you uh, the first option, which is gonna be a little bit holistic, and then two more options that um, you're gonna see they use um, a theory behind. So, um, imagine that you have a practice that work very well in Scrum teams, yeah? So the first option is that um, this practice, for example, you want to do stand-ups. Uh, well, the stand-up meeting can be used everywhere in the company. Yeah, it's very easy. People just in the morning or at some point during the day, just stand up and use this practice without any problem at all. So you don't need to change this practice to use in the rest of the organization. So you don't need to change anything at all. You just recommend or suggest this new idea and people could take the idea and start using it. Now, um, the second option is that this practice um, or framework or methodology needs to be adapted. It doesn't work very well. Imagine you are talking about uh, um, any other concept about quality, for example, perhaps what you do to create high quality products in IT are not gonna work in the rest of the organization and how you do that. Um, then um, the, the second one is that you need to adapt it, yes? Um, perhaps uh, you just adapt it a little bit, but the third one, you can't adapt it. Uh, it can be used uh, just in IT, and this is a huge challenge that you're gonna need to come up with a completely 
different idea. So my question is, how do we need, or what we did, do we need in order to create um, a very agile and flexible company? And why do we need business agility? And I'm gonna to explain to you what happened in the last couple of years so you understand why business agility is very, very important. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit back in time so you understand the example. Um, probably in 1850s, when you need a picture, um, you just took the picture in order you just to uh, get that picture developed, you took probably weeks. And the, obviously the quality was not very good. I have uh, uh, some picture from um, uh, my uh, grandparents and, 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 and then the pictures uh, were very bad quality compared to the pictures today. Probably um, in the 50s, a picture to be developed, it took days. In the 90s, it took hours. And then, um, um, you know, now you can have high definition, you can have uh, uh, effects, panorama, you can edit the pictures, etc. So what happened here is that the process was uh, digitalized. And one of the important things is that any process you digitalized is going to go from one to a hundred in a couple of seconds. And this is because you are moving a physical process to a virtual one. Every time you move a physical process to a digital one, uh, you are moving that to a microprocessor. So every time you update that microprocessor and you find um, a faster microprocessor, you are accelerating that process. But that also happens in companies. There are many processes inside the companies that you are moving those uh, physical processes that uh, have been done for years for, uh, um, by people manually and you are moving to a digital process. And then what you can see here is how computer power has increased in the last um, 100 years. Um, and if you take a look at that, computer power is, um, is exponential. So which means that um, Today, you're gonna have certain um, power, and probably in a year, you're not gonna have double. It's gonna be exponential, and it's gonna create a curve. And what's happening here is that every time you move a manual process in your organization to a computer, um, that process is gonna accelerate, and it's gonna be, um, it's gonna create a curve, and it's gonna be exponential. The main issue with human beings is that human beings um, got used to some kind of linear and small change. I create something, I pass it to you, you evolve, etc. And that goes very, very slow. And this is what we call the social system, you know, the way that we relate, we create something and we pass it somewhere else, and then they improve it, etc. But with the exponential change, it's a curve. And so that means that everything you create in a company that is digitalized is going to change exponentially in the couple of, in, in a couple of months time and that's a problem because human beings are not prepared for exponential change which means that any process you move from the physical world to the digital world in your company um, is going to go from one to a hundred in a few months and at some point you're going to create something and it's going to go faster and it's going to create a lot of variability in your um, organization. It's going to create a lot of changes. Um, this is not something human beings are, are prepared. And I remember a few weeks ago that I could see um, a demo from Google, uh, probably have seen it, where uh, you can see a lady uh, from um, that um, is, is, is um, basically in uh, artificial intelligence calling um, her uh, dressing shop um, and, and you can't even realize that that's uh, uh, not a human being. And this is what happened. We start seeing radical changes uh, as a computer power um, is exponentially changing and that affects everything we have digitalized in our company. And uh, what happens is that any change 
we have in the organization is going to be exponential. So companies are going to need to change faster and faster all the time. But unfortunately, human beings are not prepared for change. And I'm going to give you some tricks that you can use in your company. And I'm going to show you how to create plans, change plans, that can survive this high, super high level of uncertainty. So I hope you are OK so far. Um, and I'm going to move to the second block, which is that uh, you can create very flexible company without, um, with just agile. You need business agility because everything is going to change and everything is going to uh, impact the whole organization, not just the IT teams. So uh, you're going to see soon that your plans are going to need uh, to change the whole organization. And this is because organizations are becoming or affected by exponentiality. Um, so, I mark here three things that you need to change in your change plan. Imagine that you create a change plan to help some guys in some team in some part of the organization. And then um, if you want your plan to be successful and to be able to cope with exponentiality and to be able to use everywhere in the company, um, you need to focus on three things. The first one is to improve the way that people communicate. And this is because you want that knowledge in the company moves very, very quickly as the organization probably um, are going to change very quickly. And the way that um, uh, knowledge flows quickly in the organization is by making sure that people can communicate very well. The second one, we're going to be talking about powerful change plans. And finally, um, I'm going to show you how to create a plan that can cope with exponentiality. And this is the three things we are going to see in the coming um, 15 minutes. So um, when I talk about um, um, uh, the uh, com how people communicate, you have to have into mind that in any plan or change plan, you also need to have into, into mind, um, into account how people communicate, and you need to reinforce, reinforce or reinforce uh, the way that you want people to use inside the company to communicate. Um, and this is what I call the ICT feedback framework, and it's related to how people give feedback to their peers or other people from the organization. And we have inquisitive, creative, and destructive. Uh, so in any conversation you have in your organization, imagine everything is changing. Uh, people are trying to get used to uh, some changes. And people start talking to their peers about the change, about how to improve it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there are basically three ways uh, that people can communicate uh, with the rest of the peers. The first one is what we call inquisitive, and it is related to um, a very indirect way of uh, supporting or, or to communicating, um, where the person asks open questions. For example, imagine that um, you want to implement um, Scrum in some team, or you want to uh, change how the executives uh, um, solve that problem. Um, and then um, the executive in the inquisitive is going to come and say, OK, tell me more about that. And, and in the inquisitive, use open question to try to discover. The important thing about the inquisitive is that um, when the person is trying to use the inquisitive, um, is truly trying to find out what is happening and trying to get more knowledge. The second option we have here is the creative. The creative, the person say, oh, that's a good idea that executives um, 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 need to resolve the problem in this way. What about doing this and what about doing that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in the creative way, the person is bringing also their own expectation and their own ideas, and you take that into this initial plan. And the third option is the destructive. The destructive is the person said, I don't like it. You know, this is very bad for the company. I don't like it at all. So what we generally see with these three ways of communication is about learning. So if you take a look at the left-hand side, in the inquisitive, it generates a lot of learning. And exponential companies 
flexible companies need a lot of learning. And they generate no much conflict as a person is just very interested about knowing the change and is um, asking truly um, interesting questions. Now, if you go on the other side, say, I don't like that. Um, it generates a lot of conflict. You have to trust the other person. Otherwise, you know, it's going to generate a lot of issues in the company and it do not generate a lot of um, knowledge. And then in the middle, you have the creative where you add your own ideas. For example, you come to the executives and you say, okay, listen, I want to now, um, you have to start thinking about using um, uh, time frames, uh, not one year, but three months. And then the person is going to say, oh, that's a good idea. What about using it of three months, two months or six months? And then after that, moving to the rest, etc. That's going to generate uh, some knowledge. So uh, if you want to change, um, your organization and accelerate change, uh, you generally need to focus on the inquisitive and the creative, and you need to make sure that your plans have, um, in some way, uh, a way to um, teach and make sure that people use this too. The destructive is good, it's not bad, but it has to be used sporadically uh, to challenge people. For example, um, you just go there and said, uh, okay, listen, uh, I think this is not a very good idea, and that's that, that's okay, but you can't use the destructive. So first, um, you have to make sure that um, your plan um, uh, uses a communication style, and you make sure that people understand the communication style that uh, they have have to use during change and that's going to help you. You can use working agreement, you can explain the difference between these changes. And I'm going to give you now 30 seconds to write now the communication style that is mainly used in your company. And specifically, when you go through a change, imagine something is changing in your company, which communication style people generally use in your company. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds and we're going to continue with the next step. So take a pen and try to write the economic communication, communication style that is used. Think of last time where a change has been done in your company. And also, um, you know, which kind of style people use in your company. OK, so one of the things important is that uh, you start moving and you start including in your plans um, certain formal agreements that you're going to move uh, the communication style in your plans to the left hand side inquisitive or creative and you're going to teach people how to do that and you're going to make sure that they have certain uh, working agreement of what we want is to um, increase uh, learning and make sure we decrease conflict and this is the first thing you have to have into account into uh, when you create um, a plan now the second thing is uh, what we call um, powerful plans and I'm going to just go briefly, I'm going to try to explain to you how it works with um, an example. You are going to be able to find more on my website and also the book. Um, and this is coming from a theory called Enterprise Social Systems, uh, which is a theory um, and some practices that help you um, uh, consolidate a change and see the organization in a way that makes you easier to create a plan, a change plan that can be used everywhere in the company. Um, basically offer some tools uh, for coaches or um, everyone in charge of a transformation or change to implement um, a plan everywhere in the company. The idea is that uh, here is that the company is seen as four different circles. In the center, you have what we call, this, uh, we call the social systems, and it's how people communicate and the behaviors inside the company. So when you put the on the lenses of the social system, you start uh, paying attention at how people communicate, the behaviors, how it uh, becomes, con you know, um, how the what happened during the change, etc., but specifically about how people communicate and their behaviors. Then we have what we call the mindsets, 
And this is what's the mindset that people have uh, in your company. People tend to think in a certain way. What's the mindset? What's these, uh, the, the values that people have? Um, how they think when they try to solve a, a problem? What their beliefs are? The next one is the formal organization. What are uh, the structures in your companies? Which artifacts or tools they use to solve a problem? Um, finally, is the value creation layers, which is structured they use to create value for example in, in some organization they are using um, scrum or safe or Kanban, etc and that's going to live in that um, um, layer the idea is that your plan is going to uh, is going to need to touch all these four layers in order to create what we call a powerful plan so if you want to create a powerful plan you need to make sure that you ch slightly change how people communicate, you slightly change at least a little bit uh, the people's mindset, you perhaps need to change a little bit of um, changes on the structure of your organization, and then uh, you make sure that uh, you make some changes also on how you create value, and this is a powerful plan. Okay, you need these four components. It doesn't mean that each of these components have to be a one, but it can be very small. And then I'm going to show you how it works with a real problem. Uh, in one of the companies I work for, uh, we have a new joiner in a Scrum team. And every time a new person joins uh, the company for a Scrum team, what happened here is that uh, HR prepared what they call a three-day inception course, where they taught um, everything about uh, the company, the team, they could work, be working, and also about their values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, formal procedures in the company, et cetera. And then after three days, uh, this person was effectively moved to a Scrum team. So we wanted to uh, make sure that this could be used everywhere in the company and not just with Scrum teams, as I said before, we wanted a practice, and we wanted a practice that worked everywhere in the company, right? And this is a very, very important thing. Uh, we are trying to adapt this plan to make sure we can use it uh, everywhere in the organization. And if you see that do not scale if the company becomes exponential, imagine the company goes from 200 people to 3,000. You can't hire 200 human resource people to assist with this process, so this process do not scale. So we use um, enterprise social system here uh, to make sure that we solve this problem. So what we did, uh, we considered the four areas, which is the social systems, the mindset, formal organization, and value creation layer, and we created a plan that basically touches on these four layers, at least a little bit, and I'm gonna show you what we did. So uh, we have, the person, um, we make sure, and the social system, how we can make sure that this person um, start getting from the environment how people socialize and their behaviors. So what we did is that the newcomer um, did not go through an inception course, but was uh, welcomed by the team. So basically, uh, the first day at work, uh, the team came and said, hello, um, we are welcoming you, this is your new team, and the team worked with this person, they created a, a tailored plan for the new person, they had a conversation with the new person, and they said, okay, listen, uh, we believe that based on the conversation we got with you, you need to know more about this, you need to know more about that, etc., 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 and they placed it in a Kanban, and they put tasks for this person to learn. And the person could start taking a look around, see how the team uh, works, and, and learning more about the behaviors of the team. And this is what we call the social system. Then the mindset. Um, the newcomer could self-organize on the everyday learnings. So we try to start pushing this new mindset into the person, uh, and, and the person um, try to copy in some ways the mindset from the team about self-organization. Um, and this is a very important thing. Every day he went there and he self-organized about this task. 
and then uh, we added some new structures in the company um, to support this new way of working. Yes, yeah, just to make sure that the company support this new way. And finally, um, the, th the person was working from the very first day with the team with pairing uh, in order to produce value from the very you know first day to the customer. So uh, we created a plan that involves the social systems, the mindset, the formal organization, and the value creation. And this is what we call a powerful plan. So we were able to adapt something that we were using in just scrum teams with newcomers to everyone joining the company. So everyone joining the company, it doesn't matter if it's coming from, or it's going, to, it's going to work in an IT team or in financial teams or in other team into the organization, uh, we make sure that uh, this plan supports the person, supports the company, and also make sure that um, it can be used everywhere. And this is what we call a powerful plan. And you can ask me more questions in a few minutes, yes? So just try to see, um, Right, if any of your change plans are using these four areas, or you always focus on some of them. Some people, for example, when they want to make a change, they focus just on the formal organization. They just think of changing a process, for example, right? Or some agile coaches, they just focus on uh, teaching people a mindset, but they do not teach, uh, they do not make changes in other areas. So the beauty of enterprise social system is that um, in some way forces you to think of the problem in four different areas, right? And the last thing is um, that we're going to see today and then we go through some questions is what um, we talked before is that any plan has to be exponential. If the company goes from 100 per people to a thousand, your plan has to still work. If you see the previous plan works very well, even if the company grows. And in here, I'm gonna just focus on the last one, which is um, exponential change. And they're gonna go through the other ones, the traditional ways and the contagious. Um, it's very important that any plan in your organization is exponential. Otherwise, uh, at some point, if the, the company grows, you're, you're not gonna have the skills available perhaps you're not going to be able to find as many developers as you want or you're not going to have the physical space or um, for example uh, you're not going to be able to scale your practices and um, this is what we call exponential change and with exponential change what we do is we make sure that we automate everything we can or we move everything we can to uh, some processes as you remember remember technologies generally scale if you automate a process and you need more power you just change the microprocessor the server and that's gonna that's gonna um you're gonna be able to expand it yes um then with exponential change means that if you go from a hundred to a thousand employees your plan change plan is going to work so you basically need to also to use, uh, we're not going to see it today, but I wanted to mention some tricks for people to change. Imagine every day you have 100 new people in the company, you are not going to feel very comfortable about that. So we have some techniques coming from neuroscience, which allows you to make sure that people get used to with the new situation. Yeah, And this is something you generally add into your change plans and and then um you need the adequate uh, physical space obviously but you also need uh, organizational structures um that can grow that can you can expand obviously some of the structures and processes you have in your organization uh, are not gonna um scale very well so you need to use structures that scale very well and this is what we call an exponential change plan and i talk about that uh in the in the book but basically you can start any change plan by making sure uh, that at least your change plans uh, take a look at the scarce resources those resources that are limited and you try to move those uh, uh, scarce resources 
to a server to a computer imagine for example you, um, let me give you an example you're going to understand you probably work with IT teams um, if that's the case uh, you're going to need testers for your software for example uh, if the company goes from one to a thousand people in two months or three months you're not going to be able to hire enough testers so what you do you automate testing for example you use uh, automated testing uh, for your plan and so your plan your change plan is going to make sure that take a look at all the scarce resources and you move it to uh, using technologies to um, a server for example and then it's going to be scalable right and then this triangle uh, help you build a plan that particularly um, take a look at how people can feel comfortable with constant change um, how we take a look at the processes and the company and make sure that they scale and specifically if we have scarce resources how we're going to make sure that those scarce resources can can, can scale and in most of cases we are going to automate that um, then basically what we do is we convert to scarce resources people skills or structures to exponential we move it to a computer um, we teach people techniques to reframe a problem, to see different point of view. If the company changes all the time, they feel comfortable with that. What we see generally in many companies is that people don't feel very comfortable uh, when things are changing all the time. And then uh, we consider organizational structures that can adequate very well to exponential growth, yes? Um, this is what was, we have seen today. Some of the concepts I know are slightly bigger but i wanted to talk about them uh so you have a rough idea and you can start finding uh more information on the internet on my book or somewhere else um we need to change the way that i'm focused on the way that people communicate on the change plans you have to be very clear how people communicate and people have to understand why um we can use the ict framework or any other framework you need to create powerful plans that basically touch on uh, different things in order um, for for the plan to be sustainable and here you can use enterprise social systems and you can make uh, sure that everything you do it becomes exponential otherwise your plan is going to work very well if the company is small but at some point whatever you create what whatever process you have um, uh, implemented is not going to work uh, and this is what we have learned today. We started knowing how, which tools we can use um, to implement a change outside the IT areas. Uh, we learned some techniques to accelerate change in an exponential world. And I'm going to give you some minutes to answer. You can ask me some questions. We have still a few minutes, I think two or three minutes, to answer some of the questions. Mm -hmm. So if you have any of the questions, you ask me. Hi, uh, yes. So uh, we are already over time, but still we can take uh, at least one or two questions. Rest uh, we can take offline. So just let me check the question box and uh, find out. The question. Sure. Yeah. So the first question I can see here uh, during transformation, since it's a radical change, what happens during the many convergent periods and how is it different from the convergent period during incremental change okay yes so during implement um, so during a transformation people feel very uncomfortable um, they do not feel very safe and what's happening during a radical change is that general people tend to have some fear of what's coming up next now if we are talking about um, incremental change, people are okay with that, as what you are doing is you are taking something existing um, and you are implementing that, I'm improving that. Yeah, let's say, for example, you take an idea and you basically um, um, improve that idea, but there is no radical change. During the transformation, you need to make, to make sure uh, that you use there are certain tricks that you, you can use for people to feel more comfortable during a radical change you can see the transformation as a radical change 
um, and you can see uh, these convergent periods uh, during incremental change as just an improvement of what we have been doing. So uh, during radical change, people do not feel that uncomfortable. They are plus minus okay with uh, with the change. And the reason um, why I wanted to separate that then is because during a transformation, people generally um, do not feel comfortable with change. Yeah, and it's really the whole organization um, which do not feel very, very comfortable with them. While uh, during uh, incremental change, people are plus minus okay as they are just improving whatever they have been doing. Okay, so I'm moving on to the next one. Next we have, uh, are there some good methodologies uh, which can be used for business agility change plan so that people don't feel that things are imposed? Yes, so for business agility, um, you need to make sure your plans uh, can be implemented everywhere in the company. Uh, I suggest using enterprise social systems which is basically what we have been talking today, which uh, shows you um, the four different components that a plant needs to have, which is uh, the social system, the mindset, the formal organization, and the value creation layer. And that's gonna guide you to create the plan. So basically, um, I show you in my book, and you can find also some information on my blog, um, how to convert on how to use those techniques uh, to reframe uh, a plan and to be able to to, uh, to use it everywhere in the company uh, as a business agility plan. Okay, so here we take the last question and then we'll wrap up the session. Uh, we okay. Yeah. Is there any difference uh, between an agile adoption and uh, agile transformation? Yes. Yeah, so basically, um, I've seen that in many places. Um, people call it agile adoption when mainly it doesn't mean to be in that way, but many people call it agile adoption uh, when uh, employees in a company generally tend to follow those rules, but they, they do not actively improve it or improve them. Uh, in a natural transformation, people actually uh, tend to take those processes and challenge them and say, listen, I believe that that's not the best idea and we have to change it. And people actively suggest changes and are, are generally involved in the transformation. So the company is constantly uh, changing with the feedback of every single employee. So, and I believe that's it for today. Um, guys, if you have any question, you can contact me on my email. Uh, you can take a look at the book. If you have uh, any question about the book, you can write to me. Uh, also, there are a lot of information and framework you can use, uh, not just the frameworks I talked today, and just make sure that uh, you start thinking of plans in a more comprehensive way and not just IT way in order to make to, to, to convert those plans and to be able to get a better result. Uh, yes, uh, so thank you, Eric. Uh, thanks for this wonderful session. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Attending this session will earn you one SEU under category A. The steps of claiming the SEU uh, Will, you will get in an email in next uh, one hour. For follow-up queries, uh, if you have any question, as uh, Eric said, you can connect to him over his uh, email, or you can also post uh, your queries in our uh, discussion forum. The link of the forum you will get in the email in which the SU claiming steps will be there. So that's all for today. Our next uh, webinar will be on 4th of July, 8 to 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time. The topic would be Agile People, a Radical Approach for HR and Managers. Pia Maria would be the speaker. So see you. See you on 4th of July. And thanks once again for joining us today. Thank you again, Eric. Thank you, Piali. Thank you very much. And have a good day.
Thanks all. Bye.